Welcome, everybody. Uh, headphones being tested, they're good, they're good. Okay. Thinking outside the black box. Okay, there's gonna be prizes, this is gonna be interactive, this is gonna be fun. I know a lot of folks, uh, just by a show of hands, how many folks here are in the aviation industry uh, or have, are a supplier of some sort? So we've got about a quarter of the audience. So I am going to do my best to not do aviation acronym speak and I'm going to try to speak like a normal human being. Uh, if you catch me doing acronym speak, throw something at me, you know, tell me. Uh, this should be interactive and fun, and I know you all have headphones on right now, so it can disconnect us from each other, but let's not do that. Like, let's, let's be friends here. Uh, this is an open, casual environment. It's a Tableau conference, you know. My t-shirt's tucked in, but no longer, okay? <laughs> let's, let's, let's have fun. Um, and, and let's get started. First stupid trivia question uh, for all y'all. I'm from Texas. Um, first stupid trivia question, and aviation people can't answer this. What color is a black box? Orange. She's got it. The black box is indeed orange so that they can find it. A crash survivable recorder. All right, let's get started. Who am I? I am Jordan Heffron. Uh, I'm a data nerd like all of us here, so it feels good. I'm a digital transformer because that sounds more sexy than a data nerd. Uh, I'm a father. That's actually my daughter up there. She's uh, almost two years old now, and I got one of these balls from a vendor over there, and I know that she's going to be like 20 times more excited about this ball than me being home. So. Uh, anyways, I, I just wanted to say thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming to the talk. I, I hope you have fun here. And uh, let's, let's get moving. Okay, the GENX award ceremony. So GE is the world's largest manufacturer of jet engines. Uh, I happen to be based out of Austin, Texas, where we don't make jet engines. Yeah. Uh, we sell software in the aviation ecosystem. And I'm going to talk a little bit about one of the contexts of that today. Um, but the GENX Award, who traveled the furthest to get here today? Uh, raise your hand if you're not from the US. Yeah, OK. Uh, raise your hand if <laughs> you had to go more than 12 hours. More than 12 hours? We've got two. We've got two. So where are you coming from? Sydney. Oh, she wins. She wins. She wins. So the GE NX Award, the NX engine, uh, powers the Boeing 787 aircraft, which used to, um, right, still does travel this route from Perth to London. It's a 17-hour flight. Um, now, there happens to be a longer flight, but let's not talk about it. Emirates has a, has a, a, a different flight, but it's on a four-engine aircraft. For two engines to go 17 hours continuously, I mean, as a customer, I don't know if I want to do that, but hey, uh, technology enables us to do that today, and that's a wonderful thing. GE Aviation, I, I said it before, I'll say it again. I'll probably say it 50 times today. We are the world's largest manufacturer of jet engines. That's me standing in front of a GE NX engine at the Farnborough Air Show um, this year, one of the largest um, air shows in the world. And uh, GE Aviation specifically, you know, it's 26 billion in revenue in, in 2010. If y'all don't know much about GE, uh, we have a large portfolio of businesses. Uh, one of the biggest is GE Aviation specifically. Uh, our technologies are, um, diverse in our portfolio today. Uh, we have oil and gas, we have healthcare, but the, but the dynamic of GE is changing a little bit into focusing on things that are big and spin. So, when I, so it's um, turbine engines in power and water, 
in aviation and also in renewable energy, and that's where we're focusing our future. So all of the technology in GE Aviation Digital is, is, is just that. It's technology and software that's just for aviation. And how does Tableau fit into that? Why am I here? Uh, Tableau is a tool in our toolkit. Um, we are a Tableau reseller. We all know how awesome Tableau is, and we also know how underutilized data is in every industry, not to mention particularly conservative industries, right, where there's a lot of regulation uh, that has held things, held things from, you know, the natural progression of people just going and doing cool things, right? You, you can get held back by more bureaucratic red tape, and it's important in an environment where you know, safety matters. Uh, uh, if you don't know much about General Electric, you know, we're a 140-year-old company, starting with Edison, you know, who has all sorts of famous quotes. Uh, but this is one of my favorites, because you know, all of us in our journeys with data, we, we're problem solvers, right? We discover something that we want to change, and Tableau helps us get there. So let's, let's talk about the environment today. Y'all know me, I'm based in Austin, Texas, great. There are better looking versions of me in the world, uh, but you guys got stuck with me today, so I'm sorry. Let's talk about the environment that, that we live in. Um, you can obviously all, all read, data rich and insights poor, is a theme that you're gonna hear in every industry and it's not just aviation. But I'm gonna talk about why uh, in aviation, the why, a little bit of how we got there and a little bit about where we're going in the future, okay? Design and technology are here to help. And when I say we are gonna change it, I, I'm, that's the inclusive we. I'm not saying GE Aviation, I'm saying the people in this room are gonna move the needle, all right? This is an F-16, I just have to put it up there because most of the people were attracted to this talk not because they know me, but because they know that airplanes are cool. And this is cool, right? Uh, the F-16 happens to be powered by an F-110 engine that's manufactured by GE Aviation. All right, a little bit of test, let's have some fun. Uh, when we're talking about design and technology, you know, something that I like to ground us all in is, is design and a Tableau dashboard isn't nece necessarily going to change the world for people, um, but it can. So I, I consider uh, two instances of a given flight. Let's say that maybe you're coming from Sydney. You could take a direct flight into New Orleans or you could have a connection. Let's say, consider the situation of the connected flight, right? Would you rather, uh, may, maybe we consider a shorter flight than the, than the Sydney route. Uh, maybe it's a domestic flight, right? Would you rather have a direct flight or in, in coach? or two first class seats where you have to connect. I think just digest that, because I'm gonna ask you to show your hand of which person you are. Are you two flights in first class or are you one flight in coach? Who are my two flights first class people? All right. All right, who are my one flight coach people? Yes, all right. Like I was actually shocked by how many people were the two flight first class uh, people. We got a bougie audience here. Uh, that's great, that's great. Um, most people prefer one flight, regardless of the comfort situation, because you know what's more comfortable than being in first class? Not being on an airplane, that's what's more comfortable. Uh, so, so consider that, that design modality, right? That you can make an experience better, but if you're not thinking about it in a much larger context, you're, you're missing it, okay? You're missing the whole point. People just wanna go from A to B. 
So why is aviation data rich and insights poor? Aviation was recording before it was cool. Think of the black box and the evolution of the black box, the flight data recorder, you know, an initial recording device that was you know, foundational as an IoT device before IoT was IoT, okay? Aviation was collecting data and digesting that data in many ways uh, to find the niche items, the signal in the noise for many years. And to, to the point that it's safer for us to fly than it is for us to walk down the sidewalk. Consider that, and you're on a chair in the sky. Okay, that's impressive. And how does that happen? And it's, it's through data. Time series data, sensor data, there's 10,000 sensors on a single jet engine, just one. You always have two, at least. And there are sensors all over the aircraft as well, detecting when every single button gets pushed, what's being said, when the flaps are actuated, when they actually move, what's the temperature, what, and, and there's voting systems even that exist within those sensors to distill the data into actual information. And then the other reason is the, that aviation is data rich and insights poor is the regulatory environment. The regulatory environment is particularly strict in aviation for good reason. So the data exists and people aren't doing as much as they should with it. And let's talk about how that actually happens today and kind of the foundational layer. This shouldn't be new to anybody that's at this conference. You know, we live in a world that's steeped in data. But what I want to talk to is the, the, from the foundation of data to actionable insights, what it looks like in the aviation context, right? So I'm going to talk about how the data is enabled and then where we live and where we should spend most of our time is in this space of delivering actionable insights and insights. GE Aviation earlier this year in, in March uh, acquired a small company based on Miami called Avionica. Okay, when we're talking about IoT, where does the data come from? It comes from devices just like this. So your plane lands, and th that sensor data that I was talking about, those 10,000 sensors that are on your jet engine, of that recorded flight, your plane lands, and it gets sucked up via Wi-Fi or cell network, uh, depending on what's there. The device does both. So your plane lands, data gets sucked up. In the future, uh, the, world, the world is moving towards satellite connectivity, the Iridium satellite modem to real-time connected planes, right? So you're, you're, right now, people say, well, my, Jordan, you're wrong, like my plane is connected. The data that's being streamed off of an aircraft today that actually hits the ground while you're flying is pretty much text messages. So there's five coded text messages. It's called the ACARS system. Apologies for the acronym speak again. But they're, they're heavily, they're dense text messages that talk about the health of the aircraft, essentially. And it's sent at key points during the flight. Uh, basically, you know, for safety and, you know, the history of aviation, that's how it's been done, those five text messages. Well, think about if you were watching a movie and you were given five frames from that movie, five still pictures, and somebody asked you to explain what that movie was about. I mean, you, you probably couldn't even tell if it was a rom-com. You probably could tell if it was a horror film, though, right? Uh, so there's only so much information that you can tell. So we're moving from that era of still frames into full movies of data. There are a lot of steps that happen to the data to make it useful, and I'm not, I'm not going to, to bore you with the minutia of, of how that actually happens, but it's complicated, right? You know, you're taking that sensor data, and it needs to be contextually relevant, and it also needs to be correct. And for the people that are in this room, I don't want, I think we all appreciate the work that goes into making real data useful. I don't, I don't want to belabor that point 
You know, garbage in and garbage out is the reality of the situation. And when you're, you're dealing with sensitive data that matters uh, to big assets, uh, and, and it has safety implications, and it has fuel efficiency implications, and it has maintenance implications, okay, this, this is very important work of, of data merging. Um, and, and it's what our software does today. And there's a guy here, David in the back, does that, that important work, and so does Rob, if Rob's here. He's, there he is, and Rob does that too. So thank you guys for doing God's work. Okay, so since David and Rob are here, I'm gonna ask them to come up as volunteers. That, I don't think that's a volunteer, I think that's being voluntold. Uh, they didn't know that I was gonna do this to them by the way. Okay. So, you guys are, are going to help me represent a sandstorm. And, and this is a comic visual. So I want you to both stand right here. And I'm going to attempt to throw this airplane past them. And whichever one of you knocks this out first, I'll buy your first beer tonight. Okay. All right. This is a sandstorm. Rob got it. Yeah, here, it. Rob. Sandstorm, Rob. Great job, guys. That's your role. <laughs> that was it. Thank you. Was that a good break? Did everybody kind of need that? All right. <laughs> why, did, why did we do that? Why did we do that funny little thing? Because sandstorms are real events th that happen, and, and they degrade our, our assets, which are our engines, right? So sand gets sucked up into an engine, and it's hot. It turns into glass, OK? It turns into glass, and it plugs holes in our, in our engine shrouds that make them operate at an even higher temperature than what they're designed to operate, and they, it degrade degrades the engine, uh, more, deteriorates it more quickly. GE um, has what we call cumulative damage models on their engines, where they track that deterioration. And our analytics were actually approved by the FAA for removals of our engines from the aircraft. So you can see right here uh, two populations of, of engine environments, right? A harsh environment where sandstorms exist, where the Robs and David Statchens are trying to knock the engine out of the air, and then, you know, a, a healthy environment where the air quality is clean. Now, if, if you did not have an analytic for this, you would have to remove all of your engines off of the aircraft to inspect them and boroscope them and clean them at a time interval, right? At a, at a given time, based on the fact that some of them are going to come off, you have to take all of them off wing, despite the fact that many of them don't actually need to be taken off. Analytics help us determine which engines are the right engines to take off when, right? That's, that's great, Jordan. That's one example of a use case, but we're at a Tableau conference, and what really matters, what really matters to us in, in using data. Uh, McKinsey did a study in 2016 that said, what do innovative companies do? What do they do well? What, what's different between that innovative company and another company? And they said that the difference is that innovative companies do these three things well. They discover, they accelerate, and they scale. Okay, we, we all use Tableau because it helps us do all three things, right? It helps you discover, it helps you do your exploratory data analysis, it helps you accelerate, it helps you tell the story within your organization to make real change, and then finally, it helps you scale. It helps you utilize that data in an important way in your operation, whether it's aviation or healthcare.
You know, there's the joke. It's not the size of your data. It's what you do with it, right? I mean, and, and that's the reality of, of the world that we live in. You know, a lot of people like to talk about big data, but it's driving up that value chain from data to actionable insight that really matters. And the value is driven from the use of your data. We happen to provide dashboard development services, as I, I hope many people here uh, do as well. But I, but I want to show quickly how that actually happens in our world of connecting the, the data uh, to Tableau and, and making a quick dashboard. Uh, this, is, this is my version of the live demo. I did this in quick time earlier, uh, and it's sped up a little bit so that you guys don't actually have to feel the pain. But what we're doing here is we're actually connecting to real flight data in a flight data warehouse. We're picking out specific parameters, and then we're mapping that. Um, specifically related to engine out taxi and uh, weather. So we're climbing down to the specific uh, parameter that was engine out taxi in minutes. What engine out taxi actually means uh, is um, when you're taxiing on a, on a runway, you don't need both of your engines. You only need one. And the, the policy of most operators for fuel efficiency is to actually just taxi with one engine, and then they spool the other engine up pretty much right before takeoff. Um, and that's the policy, but that's not the way it us that it always happens in reality. Um, you know, if, if I'm a pilot, nah, just turn them both on, right? There's no incentive for me not to do that necessarily, other than somebody told me that's not how I'm supposed to do it. Uh, but the millions of gallons in fuel that are saved are real to an airline when your number one cost is the asset and fuel, okay, that, that's a game changer. Little things like turning off your engine every single time when you're supposed to really, really matter, okay? And showing where that happens and when it happens and the conditions that usually lead people to do it inappropriately, that's important. And, and in, in this quick, demonstration, you can see that we, we uh, provided that actionable insight to when that happens, when that event happens, in five minutes. Thank you, Tableau. The dashboard is the last piece of the puzzle. Did you guys hear that Top Gun 2? It's coming out. If you're not excited, get excited. Uh, I met a guy who actually goes by the name, the nickname, the call sign, Bear Claw, last week when I was in Washington, DC. And he was interviewed for Top Gun 2 to provide like some, I don't know. So if Bear Claw shows up, it's not a donut. I don't know. It's, it's this guy. Uh, but something that I want you guys to consider while you're here, our approach to data and analytics specifically is that we want to be our client's wingman. We don't want to own the data. It's their data, right? We want to serve them with their data. We want to be their best wingman, right? We want to be their best partner. How do you, how do you be that best partner? Well, you're humble and you listen and you discover with them and meet them where they are on their journey. And I, I have one challenge for the people in this room, and if one person in this room actually takes this to heart, it will make my conference. Try to find yourself a wingman here. And if you have a wingman at home and you know who that is, maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your best friend, that person that you do this for, Send them a text. Let them know that you're thinking about them. You know, being somebody's wingman is an important role. Being number two, it takes, it takes your full energy to be the best number two. And that's a great place to be. And with that, I want to say this audience has been the best number one 
here, and I hope that you consider me your number two. And, and that's it. I know it was short, but we got started early. If you have questions, feel free to, feel free to ask. Yeah. Oh, thanks.